Now, that's a review of this British machine. Maybe I should just do it a bit like Doug DeMario. And do all of its quirks and features of this. So, then I just go like this. Anyone watching Doug DeMario on his uh, reviews of cars? We'll do it this time with washing machine. So, I would say Doug DeMario inspired video. So, let's see how this goes. So, this is a late 80s Hoover Electron 1100 Deluxe. NG Control Series EDS A3394 and I'm going to show all of its quirks and features of this washing machine. Let's start off with the top control panel. Now this has a door release button. You have to push it and the door will open up for you. But due to wear over the years it doesn't really fling out anymore and instead it just kind of latches a little bit. Quite annoying actually, because uh, sometimes you do it and it won't really do it at all. And you have to like kind of grip here to try and open it and there's nothing there to grip. It's a bit annoying. Anyway, inside we've got this classic Hoover drum with its 4.5 kilogram washing capacity. We have this door seal which is pretty much symmetrical all the way round. And we have three drum paddles inside to wash the clothes with. Another quirk of this door is the door bowl. It sticks so far in that it's actually been hit repeatedly over the years with things like buttons on jeans and shirts. Hmm. Another quirk is this. We've got a stick here that says pure new wool. Washable, shrink resistant. The wool program has been approved by the International Wool Secretariat. Is that a word? Secretariat a word? Yeah. Another interesting quirk on this Hoover is this button here, which releases the draw. Except it's totally, utterly useless. Because you can just do that. There's actually a gap underneath here where you can stick your fingers in to pull it open, making this completely redundant. In fact, you spend more energy pushing that open than you do just grabbing a drawer naturally underneath. So, bit of a useless one there. Right, so this is the list of programs available that you can use on your Hoover washing machine, all listed neatly on the detergent dispenser, listed from A through to P, with a lot of letters being missed out simply because they look like numbers. So, I'll we'll just go quickly go through it. We've got uh, additional pre-wash. Um, it'll do a pre-wash at 40 degrees, then drain and that's it, end. Um, program B is white heather soil. So this will do a pre-wash at 40 degrees, followed by a main wash at 95 degrees. Program C is cotton whites at 95 degrees, just the main wash only this time. Uh, program D is whites economy, still at 95 degrees. Hmm. There's nothing really about for the manual, so we're not too sure. E, fast coloured 60 cotton at 60 degrees. Now, the Length of the cycles vary on a few factors like how much you're washing, what options you've pressed and whether you're running with hot water or not. You can run this with two coals if you want but it will take a lot longer to heat. So in that case, um, how long does it take to do a cycle? So a fast coloured 60 degree program on program E takes around 80 minutes or so. Um, whereas uh, uh, B will take over two hours to do. Then you've got program F, which is non fast coloureds at 40 degrees. Uh, all these cycles can be carried out with a full load of 4.5 kilograms of laundry. Then we've got the Woolens program on program G. Uh, that's on the cotton side of the dial, and the interesting quirk about that is that it's also the cool down section of the uh, cotton program. 
So essentially, it gets to the end of the cotton program, and we'll just go do slow tumbles for the woolens side of things. Uh, also, the rinses are very well, like, slow and a bit rubbish. Uh, it does four rinses, followed then it will go on to program H, which is the very last rinse of the four rinses, which is special treatments like for fabric softener. Uh, that's program H, followed by a final spin dry of 1100 RPM on program J before ending. Then you can do white nylon, program K, with up to a two kilogram load, that's a half load, uh, at 60 degrees. Uh, then you've got minimum iron at 50 degrees on program L. Then you've got delicates at 40 degrees on program M, and all of them take two kilograms of laundry. Then you've got special treatments on program N, which is also your final fabric softener rinse. Followed by a spin dry on program P, but that's not before you have to press crease guard to let it advance onto P. So for the sake of this, I'm going to switch the program on, but without the door closed. Because by doing that, I can now show you a really, really interesting quirk, which is the door's locked and I'm ready to roll, is these options. They come with LEDs. I accept the crease guard, which is the opposite way effect. I'll show you that in a minute. Anyway. Uh, right, so quick wash option. This can only be used in conjunction with program L, minimum iron, to give roughly a half an hour cycle. In fact, when I actually use it, it took just 28 minutes um, to wash lightly soiled laundry in. It doesn't reach 50, it can only reach around 30, 35. Now it just says, it is made for that, it's just lightly soiled, kind of delicate items. You can still wash up to two kilograms, but it is only supposed to be used with minimum iron program L. You can actually use this option on all the other programs, but it still has the same effect. It's very fast, but it kind of limits the temperature of how hot it gets. And I found that like white kind of gets about 50 degrees um, on programs B and C uh, and D. If you use fast colours 60, it only reaches around 40 degrees, and if you use non-fast colours 40, you only reaches around 30 degrees, so that's the only downside. Low temperature 60 is to be used with conjun in conjunction with programs B, C and D. Now what this does is it reduces the temperature from 95 to 60 whilst kind of lengthening the program a little bit. Low temperature 45 degrees to only be using with, with in conjunction with fast coloured uh, 60 degrees on program E. And again, same effect, it will lengthen the program slightly uh, while it's washing at a low temperature to reduce energy in conjunction with your new latest detergents that are on the market. Half load uh, should be used with programs B through to F. And what it does, it reduces the level of water in the washer from a very high water level to just below the door instead, on the rinses. Um, it's not to be used with program G, the woolens program, however you can still select that if you want, you're just going to end up damaging your fabrics. Again, it also says not to be used with programs K, L, M, N, N, so not to use it there. You probably can, same effect though, you might damage your fabrics. Crease guard is a bit of a different way around. So what happens is, if I put this in and turn it around to program N, It will go into crease guard and that will light up then you push it wait three seconds until the dial advances onto program p and you can release right the final thing there we go so this is what you do so we're now at the crease guard point join the cycle that will not light up until it reaches this point. 
when it reaches this point, it acts as a rinse hold. So your your fabrics will remain in water. And then to obviously get rid of the water uh, and do a short final spin, you press and hold the crease guard button for three seconds. Ready? Right, so the final thing we've got is this here. This is our delay start. And essentially it's just a timer. And it counts down to from 12 hours all the way to zero. And when it reaches zero, it re-engages the timer. And it does actually work. I did initially think it was broken, but it actually does work. It's maybe a little out, so you might actually like set it for an hour, but it might take an hour 20 for it actually starts. So, but it does work. And as soon as it hear a click, ready? Click and the timer is engaged. So any Hoover fanatics will notice there's something missing. Well, that thing missing is actually still here. It's this. It's a little window that sits over the top here. It kind of clips in, obviously, initially. But this clip on this side is broken. So it's not in properly, but it doesn't it does show you where it is So ready, so we've got program a which is obviously a pre-wash at 40 then it gets to a stop Then you've got program B which is a white heavy soil with a pre-wash and that's your pre-wash section Then you hit, hit hit your whites at 95 on program C Then you got your whites economy on program D then your fast colored 60 degree program on program E, your non fast colors program on program F. This is the cotton's cool down section of the dial on program G slash woolens. Then it will do rinses one, two, an intermediate spin, three, another drain, and then finally get to program H, which is. Um, your final rinse, your fourth rinse of the cotton cycle, then program J, which is your 1100 RPM spin, then off, then program K, which is your white nylon at 60 degree program, then you got your, your white your minimum iron program on program L, with conjunction with quick wash, it'll be your 30 minute program, then you got your uh, program M, which is actually the cool down section of the minimum iron section and white nylon section. The white nylon and minimum iron both wash at a low level, but the delicates program, program 40, uses a high level. Actually, what it does, it reaches here, and the moment it reaches here, it advances to, to there, to do cold cooldown. If it adds that program N, it will actually heat to 40 first, before it gets to this point, and then it will do a wash before finally draining and doing free rinses. So that's your first rinse, that's your second rinse, and then you get to program N, which is your special treatments slash fabric softener on program N. Then it gets to crease guard, and then you press crease guard, and it goes into program P, and then it's a short 500 RPM spin before ending on the off position. Now to turn on the machine, and there's another quirk, uh, I say quirk, because uh, it wasn't, it's a pull on, push off system and obviously as soon as I pull this it can flicks up the uh, thing. Anyway I don't want to lose that so we'll pull that to one side, push that back in. And another really really nice interesting thing is this. Yeah you can't turn the dial backwards. You can turn it forwards but you can't turn it backwards because that will just break it. Which actually impresses me, because this is British and... British. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I expect from the Germans, not the Englishmen. It's kind of weird how Hoover are like this, since we're English and it's a that will do mentality. That will do, that will do, that will do. And that was with every brand that we had. Hot Point, uh, Service, Philips, they were all the same. Just say, that will do. No, not this. Right, so this is our detent drawer. 
This side is your main wash, this side is your pre-wash. Now interestingly, it only fills through hot on the main wash side and only fills through cold on the pre-wash side. So during the pre-wash and all the rinses, it only fills on this side. If you select woolens or delicates or minimum iron, it will fill through both sides. Then finally, we've got the fabric softener in the middle here. But one thing that is interesting is, number one, if I turn, take this all away, we can just take the drawer out. It's kind of like a weird leather thing. It's really quite intuitive, actually, but kind of also a little bit rubbish, since if you accidentally pull it all the way down, it will just end up doing that. And two, we've actually got a Hoover logo on the siphon of the fabric softener drawer. Let's put that back in. Actually, I like that, but just a bit too... Yeah, it won't fall out, but... I ain't trusting it either at the same time. You know, I still don't do that and you've already got powder in. Or fabric softener in. So just to be in comparison, that's 70 millilitres of powder in the main wash compartment and that's 10 mils of fabric softener in the softener compartment. That will show you how big these compartments are. Realistically, it's like 500 mil either side. But then again, back in the day, you really did use 500 mil powder just to wash clothes. So we're going to turn it all the way around to the program. Yeah, e. <laughs> and we're going to push half load, which will light in a minute when we switch it on. Right, one other thing you need to make sure is if you want to open the door at any point, you have to make sure it's on the stop. On the dial. If you put it on during, within any of the programs, it won't unlock. Ready? Watch. That's open. Close that up. So it's program N, for example, but not switch on the machine. And it just doesn't let that button work. So you can't open the machine. Turn to a stop. And we can. How cool is that? Bit of a safety feature, I suppose. Stops kids from like smacking in the dial, stopping the machine and then trying to undo it. Possibly flooding the kitchen. But it won't do that anyway, because it's still got a two to three minute time delay door lock with it as well, which of course will engage when the water level is too high, if it's too hot, or if the machine is still spinning.
right, well, so what we're going to give this machine out of 10, then? Well, well uh, a bit surprisingly, more like a... a 7 out of 10. This is more of a personal thing, and I think a lot of you are going to be kind of disappointed in the score, because I personally don't really connect with Hoovers that much. That's just me. Um, and the thing is... I kind of like that, like, it's interesting, but just doesn't really capture my heart like a lot of other machines do, like Hot Points, for example, or uh, Zanussi's. Doesn't capture it. And yes, the Hot Point 9530 did get a 4 out of 10. Um, <laughs> no, what it is, is for me, it's a tumbling. It's just all, even when it's frequently tumbling it's still very sort of uh, more stationary than it is tumbling sort of sort of in between and it's just a bit i remember what i, I there was a, a logic 1200 which uses very similar programming in my childhood and it was just just remember it and i remember seeing it on us on a lot as well because it was uh, one of my best friends that had it at the time as a child and it's just just doesn't really capture me as that much. And one of the, one of the few things that kind of annoys me with this machine, obviously you've got this door release, which obviously can't operate until it's at the stop. Bit of a safety feature, fine, but the fact it doesn't really kind of release it or push it. I know this is sticky because the, the door seal is obviously starting to perish away due, due to its age. But even so, even without it, it just never really pushed it away as such. And with nothing really to grab, it's a bit awkward. Um, the other thing is the the quick wash button. Um, it's You can use it on any cycle and there isn't really that much information about temperatures or anything like that. Um, it does a bit of a timed heat with a short main wash or a short heat section my you know doing its wash tumbles more more frequently but there's nothing in the manual to actually say yeah use it with program l but it doesn't actually say it only does 30 degrees um, or whatever i'm sure people out there if, even if they did read the manual would have probably pressed that along with um min uh, iron program l and then still expect it to do 50. no it didn't um I guess it's one of them. Obviously, and then you've got the two low temp buttons, which are specifically for only Pacific cycles, just to reduce the temperature. There's like no wall button, so the wall cycle, annoyingly, um, if you had the wall button, it does a 800 spin, does those tumble, does slow tumbles only, and does no intermediate spins, cancels them all out. But with this, um, no, it still does intermediate spins with the wool cycle. It still does the same tumbling pattern for the rinsing, which is slow because it's for the wool. That means even for the, for rinsing for cottons is slow. It's like, why do we need two buttons? Cool, it's part of the energy control series, but yeah, they could have put more buttons here. It's just weird how crease guards here. You could put more buttons around long here, I suppose. Or something like that. You could put like a wall button and then no spin button or something like that. Just to make it more intuitive and actually flexible. Yeah! And then there's the biggest thing. I really just... D d this! I'm actually wasting my energy pushing that all the time if I want to use it. Instead, I'll just go up and just do that. Yeah. Crazy Hoover thinking. One thing I was actually extremely impressed about, though, was balancing. Now, obviously, this machine doesn't really have any balance sensors whatsoever. So, depending on, you know, depending on what you're washing, your machine could go and walks. Well, no. 
Oh, it's kind of portrayed in the past. This is portrayed in the past as like a machine that will go for a walk on spin. But actually, in hindsight, the only machines that kind of went for a walk on spin were hot points, where British made machines. Um, the German ones were just far too heavy. Oh no, wait, my Bosch actually did walk. He did actually walk. Um, and the AG can walk as well. And they are really heavy machines. But this, no, I had one I I have a, I had one bath towel in. And actually, I'm gonna put a little film at the end, so stick around for right right at the end of it, because it's never been on anywhere else. And um it spun and didn't move. It spun on balance, but it just didn't move. It didn't hit anything, it didn't knock anything off. I was impressed like that, but so Build quality with Hoovers. Hoovers aren't British enough. I think that's my problem with them. They're too well built. Some annoying things, but just well built. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really like that part of plastic. Cool. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the future. Yes, I hope you enjoyed the uh, review.